In this video, we're going to model this really cool oil lamp. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you how to get this neat effect just in the viewport without rendering. So the first thing to do is download the reference image that's available from the link in the description. Bring it into Blender. And don't forget to go Shift A image reference to bring it in and then press S2 on your keyboard and then move your reference image so that it's right down here at the bottom. Okay, the 3D cursor is right there at the bottom and also move it a little bit back in the Y. All right, so let's go. Let's press Shift A, Mesh, Cylinder. We could probably do this at 22 vertices. So let's do that. Go into Edit Mode and Z for Wireframe. And it should line up pretty good. If it doesn't, just scale it in just a little bit. Okay, SZ to scale it in the Z and make it nice and thin so it squishes down just like that. And don't worry if it doesn't completely match the diagram. You're still going to get a neat oil lamp. And by the way, I'm probably going to call this a lantern at some point. So just, just get that out there right now. All right, deselect and then press B to box select and drag around these. Okay, E to extrude and pull up to here. I like to click there and get rid of that. S to scale, pull it in. And then let's come up. I know you can't see because of the bar and that's why I gave a few different views. We're just coming up to this black line there right underneath that bar. So let's just press E to extrude, come up. Don't worry about the bulging part yet. Let's just come up to there, around there. All right, let's zoom in a bit. Let's press E and then S and scale it out. And you'll notice that I'm doing this in vertex mode, number one. Then I can see my vertices and I can see how far I've come out. It's just a little bit easier. All right, let's go ahead and do this flat part. Let's press E to extrude, pull up. We'll come back and do this in a minute. E to extrude, pull up, and then S to scale. Don't just scale in one dimension. Like, don't just scale in the X because it looks narrower or it will not have the right dimensions. We'll do it like that. Press one to look from the front again. And now control R to drop an edge loop in. And then S to scale, pull it out until you get the desired um, size. And then control B to bevel, pull and separate. And you can roll your mouse up probably just once and that's okay. There we go. We've done the bottom part, let's go out of wireframe in a solid view and see our work. So far so good. Let's turn on the cavity shader which will make it look neat and also let's switch the type to both and pull these sliders up about three quarters. That's also going to make it look neat as well. All right so far so good. Let's not worry about smoothing it yet. Let's move on and do this part. So let's come in here and let's press two for edge selection. You don't have to, but I like to do it that way. Shift Alt and click one of these round circles here. Let's say that one. And let's duplicate that to build this. Shift D to duplicate, pull this up, and we don't have to separate it. Let's press one to go back to vertex selection and line it up and then press S to scale and just get it to be the right size. All right, cool. Let's continue now. Let's press Z for wireframe though. E to extrude. We have that flat region. E to extrude, come up to there. Again, don't just press SX, just S. So it scales in all directions to there. E and up to there. E, come up to here and then S, scale it out. Now for this part, there's a little indentation in there. So let's skip that for the moment and press E to extrude and come straight up to there. And we will come back for this part. E and S, E and up. And one more time, E up to the top like that. And then S to scale and pull it in like that. All right, let's come back here. Control R for an edge loop. You can do two, click and drag one down there. Do another one, Control R, click and drag down there. And we want it to go in, so I'm going to deselect now. We just pressed Alt A, 
press 3 for face selection and shift alt and click on one of these lines edges there all right let's press e and alt s and pull and bring it in as much as you really want to make that indent cool let's go into solid view and see it we have a hole in the top so we better close that so two for edge selection shift and alt and click there have to make a face and that's all we need to do and there we have the main body now we're going to close up the bottom as well though and make that little indent so let's in edge selection shift alt and click i'm going to look back here though i'm going to go even into wireframe i want to make sure i pull this in past where these posts are going to attach you see there's some thickness here so it's a little hard to tell so i'm just going to press e and s and pull in and i wish i was actually get that out of the way in one vertex selection so i'm going to scale in again and now i can see my vertices and i can see that i'm past there and i can turn and look under and i see i have a certain amount of thickness it doesn't really matter how much we can change that later that's where the glass is going to attach right you'll notice by the way on my reference image i'm not using the image that i originally showed you i just have some stuff removed so that's fine the one that you're going to get is this and you'll be able to see through the glass that's okay all right back in a solid view it's a little bit easier for this we can just have to make a face and then e to extrude and just push up a little ways just something like that and then, like I say, we can change the width of that if we have to. Now, what we need to do is add some bevels to this. And I'm just going to do it by hand. I'm going to come down. I'm going to press 2 for edge selection. And I'm going to come down to the bottom. And I'm just going to start selecting. So I'm going to press Shift and Alt. That way, I get the edge all the way around. That one and that one. And I'm just going to bevel those. And then I'm going to keep going up. You don't have to do them all at the same time. And it doesn't matter if they're slightly different. Control b to bevel. Pull so you get a separation and if you only have two edges in there roll up so you have three that's how many we're going to use don't put them too tight and don't put them too far away just i don't know just use your eye and just use your intuition we're going to want to bevel this as well control b and pull do something like that so there's sort of a bit of a roundness to the to the joining there same thing with this shift and alt and click control b and pull do something like that and anytime we have a sharp edge, we're going to bevel. So this one and this one, shift, alt, and click, shift, alt, and click. I often do like to do some together, although you don't have to. I'm going to do that. This thing here, we don't want that just like that. We want to bevel. So we've done that part. Let's come in here. We are going to need to bevel that edge. That's too sharp. So just grab it and control B and pull and have three same for all of these they're all going to be three just like that this joining here and this one let's do those together like that i'm going to do this one and this one and this one we're going to come back to these all right control b let's do those let's just do the top now this one i'll probably do a little bit bigger you know something like that okay these last two here just because they're smaller i'm just going to turn so i can see there we go it's a nice view just like that done control s don't forget to save let's shade smooth and we should be in good shape these white lines that you see here that's because i changed this all right maybe if you don't like that we can leave it like that for now we're going to do that effect soon so we've got the body of the, the uh, so I was going to say the lantern, the lamp. I don't like the color, the shading on this. I know there's an, a problem there. So I'm going to select that face. I went to three face selection. I'm just going to press I to get set and pull it a little bit. That'll fix that up. Sometimes you'll have that on the bottom as well. And because this will be hanging and you might see the bottom, I'm going to do the same. I to inset. Clears that up. Just keep saving. I usually save after almost every keystroke. All right, so let's now do the glass in there. And because I have the old reference image here, not this one with the gold and the blue, so that there's some glass that's supposed to represent glass there. Uh, in, in front, I'm going to actually move the reference image so I get this glass. So just hang on. 
pretend nothing is happening. Just slide it over like that a little bit. All right, let's do the glass. So to do that, I'm going to borrow, I'm gonna borrow a circle. That one there, I think is gonna be just fine. I'm gonna look from the front. I'm gonna go into wireframe, one for vertex selection. I have to duplicate it, shift D to duplicate it and pull it down. Now, do I have something else? I had something else selected, so I'm just going to delete those vertices and go back into solid view. Just make sure there's nothing selected. I'm gonna select that edge. Shift D to duplicate it, pull it down, P to break it out. So I went P and enter. So that is a separate piece. It's not part of the main body. I'm going to go back into edit mode in front view, one for vertex selection and Z for wireframe. And now I'm going to scale this down a bit. I'm going to move it up, scale it down. What I want is for this glass to be underneath that indentation and by the way i'll fix up the shading on this in a minute and it looks like it's going to fit in as i so if i push that up the glass is in there so we can go ahead and push that up there all right back into wireframe e to extrude pull down to about here and scale it out and what i'm going to do is i'm going to have this line pretty much right in the middle of where it curves and then i'm going to press e to extrude and i'm going to pull down again a little bit hard to see so just use your intuition your imagination scale it in this is going to join or make contact with this piece here around there now i actually may pull this down a little further somewhere around there and again it doesn't matter if it doesn't match the diagram perfectly let's bevel control b to bevel pull and you can have a few segments in there just to make it nice and round and S to scale it a little bit more just so that you get a nice curve on that thing. And it's going to just lay on here and push on and it's going to go up there. And I probably, you know, that's not pretty good. Let's shade smooth that. What we should do before we go any further is have a look and see if any polys are flipped. And as you can see, that is. So that's just one flat piece. So I'm going to have to go Alt N. I don't think I can do recalculate outside, but I did it and it worked. So huh, how about that? Thought I would have to do just flip. Okay, so what's going on here? Um, well, one thing we can try to do is, first of all, I probably want it a bit smoother. You don't have to. I'm going to go Control 1. And that actually clears everything up. Uh, I added a one a single subdivision that will sometimes however make some of your edges a little bit sharper and that actually looks good for something that would potentially be metal so I'm gonna leave it like that and I think we're in good shape but I'm gonna save all right let's move on to the bars we've got the main body and the glass of course you can come in here now and you could say call this um, body you could call this glass. The empty is the reference image, so won't worry about that. I actually want to move my reference image back. So I'm gonna slide this back over. All right, it's very easy to create these. Uh, my 3D cursor has never left this spot, and so it's fine right there. What we're going to do is press Shift A, mesh plane, bring in a plane, believe it or not. And I'm going to rotate X90, and I'm going to start pulling it up to here. Let's go into wireframe so we can see what's going on. All right. We're going to scale this in the SX until these edges are in pretty much the middle of the bars. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to pull it down to about there. And there's another edge down here, this one. Let's pull it to about where the where the curve takes place and X edges get rid of that edge press one for vertex selection and I'll select it also you can see and now we have these points so we're going to use these so select this point and this point and looking straight on press E to extrude pull down a ways and then press S to scale or SX if you prefer and just pull them in you can then pull them up scale them again Pull them down, scale them, that kind of thing. All right, so we have 
the bend and it's attaching to the main body there. How to handle the top? Select those two points and we want to make a curve off of here. So it'd be nice if we had a point there and a point there. So let's do that. Subdivide, open this up, change this to two. So we now have two points and they're almost where we need them, but we have this edge. Let's get rid of it. Press two for edge selection. Select just that edge, X edges, one for vertex selection. We now have these points. We can now press E to extrude, pull up, and then F to make a face. So we now need to round these. So I'm going to do these two first. So to round single vertices, not the polys we had before, we're going to bevel, but we're going to do shift control B, not just control B, shift control B and pull. And as we pull, they may collide like that and overlap. So press C to clamp, they'll hit and they can't go any further. All right, it's like clipping in, in, in the mirror. And roll up your mouse till you get a nice smooth curve. That's probably going to be just fine right there. All right, so do that. Now, the other thing we want to be careful of is we're going to be rounding these as well. And we don't want to hit these ones. So let's try that. Let's probably just put three in here. Shift, Control, B, pull. Roll your mouse back. There's two, three. That should be okay as a curve, I hope. All right, let's grab these ones. We're going to do a bigger curve here. Shift, Control, B. Let's pull three. I'm going for five. I like using an odd number so that I have one in the middle, sort of the elbow, and then two more to create the rest of the curve. Uh, it depends on how drastic the curve is. For example, here, Shift, Control, B, I may just go back to three. So we'll do that. And again, it's not perfectly on the diagram. That's totally fine. So this is what we have. Let's go back in a solid view and have a look at that. Let's make that into a mesh. Well, into a curve first, actually. Convert to curve. Come into the curve dialog box under geometry and bevel. And hold shift while you're on this depth part. Hold shift and pull to the right. There we go. Now we may have some pinching in here that we're going to have to deal with. And let's make note of this number zero. I got 0 0.61. I'm going to go 0 0.6 and see if that satisfies me. I'm going to shade smooth. We're going to fix that pinching. All right. But we're going to do that when we convert this to a mesh. So 0 0.06 is what we used. Let's go with that. Let's convert this to a mesh. But first, we're going to change the resolution here so it's not 12. I'm going to make this one 4. Lower the resolution so that when I right-click and convert to mesh, uh, let's make sure I'm on the, on the thing. When I convert to mesh and go into edit mode, I don't have too many polys or vertices or whatever. As you can see, we have a problem here. They're crossing over. So let's do what we can to fix that. We have a, an edge right in the middle. We could fix one side and mirror it, and I think that's exactly what we're going to do. In wireframe and one for vertex selection, we're going to box select everything except the very middle there, X vertices, and we could just work on one side. My 3D cursor is right in the middle still, so I should be able to just mirror this piece over. So let's just do that. And I'll turn on clipping, and we can work on this side, and ah, we can see that it is messed up so shift alt to click this edge and let's move it but let's press g and g to edge slide and move it along its edges just get it out of the way there let's take this one g g move that one up and this one g g we'll move that one like that and now we're going to just reform this a little bit in fact this one i think we could probably get rid of it we could use this edge and this edge and this edge so x i'm going to dissolve edges and now i'm going to take this edge and just move it and just reshape this curve a little bit in fact let me rotate this a little bit and we'll get this looking okay and just take this and then take this and pull it out and look at it in solid view and then go control one all right, so we had to do a little bit of manipulation, and sometimes you're going to have to do that. It's not always going to be, you know, perfect. I think that looks fine as a hook, a little bit different than the diagram, but that's okay. It's not 
touching this or anything, so that should be fine. And double checking again, face orientation, okay. By the way, if you wanted to, you could come in here and in face selection, shift alt and click here, shift D to duplicate, P to break out, so we have this piece separately. Come in here, scale it, S to scale, and then switch over to normal and shift alt to click this edge here and you can pull it down I have to make a face if you want i have a subdivision i'm going to get rid of that control b pull to bevel in fact i think it's moved a little just position it if you want a joining thing like that see i've got the mirror on i'll leave those for now but i'm not going to do it in for all the other ones all right all right, we're gonna leave the mirror for the moment and we're gonna move on with the rest of the bars. So I have a, a bar here and a bar there. Let's use a circle, a pre-made circle uh, to do that. Just grab any one, something like that one, shift D to duplicate it, pull it out, but break it out, P, separate by selection. So it's not part of the main body. Go into edit mode, scale it a little bit. That's about the size I want. All right, let's convert it to a curve. Convert to curve over here and I used 0 0.6 before I don't think I want that that's coming in at about 0 0.04 so let's go with that and I can shade smooth is that a good thickness I think that's fine all right I'm gonna go into edit mode and let's go back to global shift D to duplicate pull one down here and this one looks like it's a bit bigger so I'm gonna S to scale just make it come out a little bit wider. All right, good. Okay, we're gonna do the side ones now. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna use a plane. Oh, we're just gonna, we're gonna basically draw it. Make a plane, go into edit mode, press M, merge at center. So I have just one point, look from the front, G to drag it up and put it right about there. I know we can't see if it was underneath there, so just drop it there. Good enough. E to extrude, G, drag it to around there in the middle of the elbow, let's say. E, drag it in here and then readjust your positioning. We're gonna turn this into a curve in a second, so that's gonna be fine. We're gonna get a position where it sort of interacts with these bars like it's welded to it. I'm just gonna take this and tuck it under. Again, I just wanna make sure that it's kind of, you know, in this part and, and sort of in the middle. And that's probably okay. So let's go ahead and let's bevel this. Shift control B, pull. I think I'm gonna have five. Just pull like that. And then I'm gonna box select all these points. And I'm just gonna pull them out just to sort of match the diagram a little bit more. I can manipulate that one. That's gonna be just fine the way it is. Let's convert that to a curve. And Keeping in mind that 0 0.06, I think that will be too big for that. So let's see if we can, uh, they don't all have to be the same. Let's, I got 0 0.045 on that one. Shade smooth, it'll look a little bit nicer as we do this. And uh, let's see, how do I want this? Let's see, that's uh, 0 0.04, I'm, I may try 0 0.04. Maybe that's going to be the answer. And maybe we're going to come in here and box it like these and just pull them in a little bit. You can pull them down. No, yeah, that's not a good idea. Uh, if that's there, it's kind of on the outside of that bar, but it's kind of in this bar. So um, let's see. Maybe we will just leave it at, well, we can always take this one. That'll move it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. How's that? You can fiddle with this as much as you like. Uh, I kind of like that, but you know what I could do? I could come in here. I could select this one and I could scale it just ever so slightly, just S to scale. And I think I'm okay with that. I think that's gonna be just fine. All right, 3D cursor, you've still not moved and that's great because we are gonna look down from the top number seven, go into edit mode and select it all. 
And let's switch our pivot to the 3D cursor so that the origin of this is right there. And let's go Shift D, rotate 180 degrees. So it's on the other side now. A to select everything, Shift D, rotate 90. And deselect and go back into object mode. We now have our bars all the way around. And hopefully we like the position of where they're attaching. I think it's fine uh, for us. All right, so let's now convert these to a mesh. And you'll note that the top one is thicker than the bottoms. And if you don't quite like that, you can always try experimenting. Like, what if I bring that up to 0 0.05? And what if these ones were 0 0.05? This could that be an improvement? Is it going to look better? And you know what? It just might. And I could also come in here and select all of these individual top points I can look here s to scale and as I scale them it sort of brings them back you know towards the middle of this s and just looking at this part though if I like that see the bars on the outside so I don't think I'm gonna do that I'm telling you to do that I'm not gonna do that in fact um, okay so this one is a mesh 0 0.05 mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a personal choice at that point. Let's now take these and make these all mesh. So I've got those selected. I'm going to make this resolution of three is probably okay. Right click and convert to mesh. So those are done. This one, I'm going to make it three as well. Doesn't have to be higher than that. Convert to mesh and control J to join those. I'm going to join all of these bars and I'm not going to use that stuff because my reference doesn't. So that one I'm going to, I'm going to, it's already a mesh, this control J, uh, that one had a mirror on it. So I'm going to apply the mirror. And this one also has a subdivision on it and these don't, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and join these anyhow. And I'm probably going to go control one just to make it a little bit smoother. So I have all those joints. So if you wanted a particular texture on that, you could do that. Uh, that has done what we need to do. There's nothing else on here that we've missed. Uh-huh, right? So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to look at face orientation is good. I'm going to select everything and go in. In an M merge by distance, I recommend you always do that before you unwrap or do anything else just to make sure and double check the polys. And let's just quickly have a look at the statistics. Okay, 25,000. Not too surprising because of the subdivision. I'm not going to apply the subdivision, but we are done the modeling. So I'm going to show you how to get that nice effect without rendering just in your viewport. All right, we'll come over here to matte cap, and I'm going to choose this shiny matte cap. Choose a nice shiny matte cap like that, and switch from material to object. And then with an object selected, come down to here to the square there, object properties, scroll down to viewport display, and change the color to something like that. And you can come in here and get the hex and you can copy that. And then you can come in here if you want the same and you can just control V and paste it so you have all the same there. And then to simulate the glass, just select it and choose a bluish or greenish tinge. And then come over here and lower the a the alpha to start making it sort of see-through. I'm just going to do it like that. And here is our oil lamp. Maybe you put this, the, you put that on. Um, the one thing I should say is that in texturing this, when I texture this for the pirate scene, there are going to be holes periodically in this, uh, in here, and maybe it'd be a candle flame and stuff, and some holes along here. So that I'm going to do that in texturing. It's a lot easier to do that. So uh, if you're interested, then uh, come by and check that out down the road. So that's it for the uh, oil lamp lantern thing. It's going to hang in the lower deck of the pirate ship. And uh, yeah, we got more to do, so come on back next time.